A heat wave that is sweeping India is being blamed for at least 750 deaths. But there are reports more than a thousand lives may be lost. Temperatures inching ever higher in some parts of the country nearing 50 degrees Celsius. Rain comes to Kerala every year. Not like this. A third more rainfall than usual has fallen this season with devastating effects. Hundreds of thousands are now homeless and living in 1,500 emergency relief camps. Scientists point out that women and children are 14 times more vulnerable in a disaster. Ironic, considering women produce up to 90% of rural food intake and up to 80% of all food in developing countries. We've had uh, the outbreaks of Nipah. We've had the outbreaks of uh, canine distemper virus. We've had the outbreaks of Zika. And, 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 and this is all uh, related to climate change. The kinds of impacts that we are seeing, whether it is in the context of increased floodings or lower crop yields or to air pollution or extreme temperatures or vector-borne diseases, all of these will increase. So we know wherever we are in the world, the, the people who have the, the most economic disadvantage, the poorest people, people who are most marginalized in society, are the people who are most likely to be affected, either because they are working outdoors in jobs that expose them, that they uh, have trouble being able to take breaks, being able to, to not work, for example, or because the quality of housing is lower, or for a whole variety of reasons. We also know that, that things like vector-borne diseases interact a lot with social factors, with crowding, with how many people are around you, with the quality of housing, and all of these kinds of things. One of the things that's happening around the world, and is especially happening in India as well, is that people in the health field are more and more starting to use weather and climate data to try to help them be more effective in the provision of health services. So sometimes that's just as simple as being able to predict heat waves with better accuracy. So India has really pioneered the development of some heat wave early warning systems where the meteorological department gives the health department a three, four day notice that a, a particular threshold of heat is going to be exceeded so that they can activate a whole system that will go out to people who are vulnerable and find ways to protect them. And those heat wave early warning systems have already been shown to save lives in places like Omnibus. We're also trying to work on the use of longer term data and forecasts. We're using more uh, lagged kinds of information about the weather. So we're trying to study that and then use predictions of the rainfall and the temperature to be able to understand where and when the highest chances of a disease outbreak of some kind of vector-borne disease like dengue, where that might occur.
once in five years, but now you're getting it every year. So that's essentially because mosquito breeding patterns have changed and the climate is changing. The second is the waterborne diseases. Again, are impacted by changes in the climate. Many people cannot relate to We had the computational resources set up already to be able to have all the stations in the tool. They will be there shortly. Uh, but for today, we're going to just focus in on several stations that have been talked about. Everybody here? Uh, this is the how this translates into indices. Gender roles and, and, and the biological differences between men and women all interact and can make women more vulnerable in certain kinds of settings. Sometimes it has to do just with the fact that women, um, both because of being of childbearing age and, and having menstruation, but also because of roles in the family, uh, may be more likely to be anemic. Um, we also know that women in, in a setting of disasters uh, may often be more vulnerable than men. Often the shelters, uh, there's a lot of work to provide shelter systems for, for women specifically so that they're less vulnerable to violence and other kinds of problems. If you want climate and health to be an essential part of health system, you have to look at the planning process, you have to look at the implementation process, review process, and that feeds into the next plan. Across all the states, I really found that that was missing in most of the states.